Well, hello there, my fellow subscribers or anyone here on YouTube. How you doing? Uh, so I was thinking, you know, instead of like looking, you know, instead of like re posting reviews and, you know, I, I you know, I, there are some, you know, videos that I still have that I have on my shelf that I have yet to upload on my YouTube channel. Like, um, there are only a couple uh, reviews, Marvel and DC movies that I haven't yet uh, posted on, that posted like Deadpool 2, uh, Jonah Hex, Green Lantern. Um, so get So get ready for all of those because they will be, I will be posting them up soon. I just have to get the time. But anyway, I want to talk about, so recently I went onto YouTube, so over the weekend I was on YouTube and I was watching these videos, and these videos have really gotten me, you know, these videos explain why these, you know, movies like Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, why Thor, Love and Thunder are not great movies, and I wanted to participate and get involved in this uh, conversation and this discussion. So I'm going to be sitting here explaining to you why Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness isn't great. So let's just um, dive right into it. So I have I do have bullet points right here on my laptop that I'm looking at, that I'm staring at. So I got my laptop with me. I got you guys with me. So let's get started. I, when this movie, this was the first movie, this is the first MCU movie. I know like, when, well, when it comes to the MCU, it's Moon Knight, but movie, it is the first movie that came out this year, 2022. And um, it was supposed to come out in March. Uh, but then it got postponed um, to May. But anyway, um, and then I heard the news that the movie was going to be just two hours and six minutes long. And I was like, that's really short. Why? What's going on? And because of that, I, feel, I felt like the pacing can be rather off sometimes. Maybe it's just me. But maybe you guys notice it too, but I felt like the pacing is off at some moments in the film. Um, and the film is somewhat confusing for casual viewers. Because everything happened happening here can sometimes happen way too fast. And it even requires viewers to watch Disney Plus shows like WandaVision, Loki, and What If to get to know the concepts about the multiverse and its countless variants of superheroes and villains so yeah so basically what that bullet point means it, what i mean in that bullet point is that basically you need to watch i mean well you definitely have to watch wandavision um because this that show leads into this movie multiverse of madness you can watch loki if you want to understand um if you want to understand the multiverse and get introduced to the concept and you can i mean i did there were some moments in what if that i loved but there were also some moments there were like that one episode of what if with thor like basically like what if thor was like an only child that episode that one episode was like really shit it was so sh it was such a shitty episode um, but, uh, yeah, so, you know, Captain Carter was in What If, and now we, we, we had a live action version of her in, well, we had, cause she's dead in this movie. <laughs> um, so yeah, so it can be confusing sometimes if you haven't seen those shows on Disney Plus, if you just went straight into the movie. So yeah, one of the most criticized aspects of the film was the infamous characterization of the Scarlet Witch. It wasn't really developed. We're talking about a major character derailment. Derailment. 
Now look, the concept of, you know, heroes turning villains is not bad. In fact, if you can make it work, this leads to a great potential. But it wasn't like that with her story arc. Despite her character growth and seemingly maturity in at the series finale of WandaVision, the Scarlet Witch went from a caring, benevol benevolent, excuse me, kind-hearted and selfless super he super he heroine little I'm mixing up my own words <laughs> um, I'm stuttering with um, but anyway selfless super heroine who was willing to move on to a egotistical sadistic self-righteous and ferocious villain who was determined to kill opponents and even innocent people for her own goals all because she wanted to be with her imaginary kids, her fake children, who aren't even real, that she just made up in this alternate reality WandaVision. Well, I mean, like, while it was understandable that Wanda had suffered a lot as she lost her loved ones and friends over the years, her tragic past does not give excuses for the Scarlet Witch to endanger the multiverse for her crazed obsession of getting her fucking kids back. Her fucking imaginary kids back. She knew very well that the main purpose on of the Darkhold was to corrupt people like Agatha Harkness, Catherine Hahn, and WandaVision. Yet, she deliberately took possession of it and let it control her to the point where she would be unreasonable to listen her counter arguments with the protagonists you know the, the you know the protagonists like wong america chavez Do dr strange himself uh had been nothing more than plain and pathetic excuses for numerous attempts to absorb the powers of america chavez speaking of her even knowing all even knowing well that such action would kill the young innocent girl her own quotes like i'm not a monster steven i'm a mother what have you done and i would never hurt anyone only made wanda even more ironically pettier and inessential as she had committed all crimes in wandavision and this film for nothing but selfish and inhumane purposes think about that Really think about that, what I just said. The Scarlet Witch did not show any remorse for her malicious actions and only did so when the imaginary, her fucking kids, oh my gosh, she just won't shut up about her fucking kids, rejected her and made her see the error of her way at the last minute. Before that, she was fucking blinded. She kept making excuses for her actions, for her... <sighs> Let's just move on. About the point Wanda was killing off innocent people willingly, America Chavez was probably even minding her own business prior to the film. But the Scarlet Witch had found her way as a key to get her kids in an alternate universe, thus provoking a wild chase and straight-up murder attempts against Chavez, who was definitely innocent, making some viewers to show even more sympathy for Chavez when Wanda herself, as the former, literally ran for her life across the multiverse. <sighs> While Doctor Strange and Wong tried to reason with the Scarlet Witch, she just simply attacked them viciously as she murdered multiple, like, like multiple sorcerers and troops and people and protectors at Carmitage. In a later occasion, she threw Wong out of a palace as he only tried to reason with her for a final time. Besides, everyone in the Illuminati, with the exception of Professor X, uh, the great Patrick Stewart, were no saints. But the Scarlet Witch unnecessarily eliminated the entire Illuminati except the uh the illuminati's version of baron mordo the uh eighth earth uh 838 
thus creating potential devastating consequences within the latter's universe. An extremely powerful and invincible being like the Scarlet Witch could have just simply knocked an enemy team out and set them aside with the only one purpose of getting a single particular target and nothing else. To make things even more worse, the Scarlet Witch controlled 838, her other version of Wanda, her innocent and loving alternate self without the latter's will or consent. She fucking took control of her mind without her consent. At one point, the Scarlet Witch even attempted to kill her alternate Wanda without hesitation or any second thought to get like her alternate version's kids herself. Like, uh, you know, to quote YouTube comments about Wanda, it is never a problem for fans and audiences to show pity and sympathy for Wanda as she lost everyone she ever loved from her parents and brother Pietro Maximoff Quicksilver from Age of from Avengers Age of Ultron to Vision and Avengers Infinity War as long as they acknowledge that Wanda was already a main villain in the entire story of Wanda Vision and this film and and this film excuse me additionally Wanda could have just simply asked America Chavez to for help to find a alternate universe reality timeline whatever where a Wanda variant already died and the kids were legitimately orphans instead of trying to kill her to absorb her powers that bullet point right there that I on my Google on my Google Docs <laughs> that bullet point is my main problem with the whole script and the story of this fucking movie this movie isn't about Doctor Strange it's about Scarlet Witch Wanda and she just won't shut the fuck up about her kids. Her fucking imaginary fake kids. I mean, like right there. Like there could she could have just she could have just asked. She could have just, you know, politely and simply asked America Chavez to help find an alternate version where a Wanda variant already died and her kids were orphans. Just go to that timeline, pick up the kids, and live happily ever after. Instead of going to this fucking... Ugh! This movie. Ugh. It really is frustrating. This movie was written by adults. Adults with brains. With fucking brains. They wanted to make a movie, but they didn't think about the logic and the realisms, like all of that. They didn't think about any of that. They just did what they want to. And we got this mess. Anyway, let's move on to the next bullet point, shall we? Even Spider-Man and Thor in separate occasions have lost everyone. They knew and loved in their respective movies. However, as much as they wanted to avenge their losses by eliminating enemies in cold blood, let, I'm using these two characters as example. They were mature enough to not go too far to commit selfish and villainous crimes like Wanda did in her respective installments, like Wanda did in this fucking movie. And also, this film, if you really think about it, like, really like deeply think about it this film also tried to tried so hard to make scarlet witch sympathetic similar similarly to the flag smasher the main villain uh carly morgenthal the female flag smasher the leader of the flag smashers the main villain which is the who is the main villain of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier on Disney Plus due to their similar motivations. While in reality, both of them thrive for selfish ends using merciless, terroristic, and destructive approaches despite claiming to fight for noble causes. Despite America Chavez's descent, decent, excuse me, character development in the film, the majority of the events made her serve as more of a damsel in distress like everyone's going after like everyone's going after 
America Chavez. She is the key to unlocking the multiverse, and Scarlet Witch wants her. She needs her to fucking her fucking kids who heavily relied on Doctor Strange and his resources to survive, and she did not even try to defend herself against the Scarlet Witch until a single sentence from a defeated Doctor Strange made, you know, Doctor Strange, the, the zombie Doctor Strange near the end of the movie in the final act, made her feel motivated enough. It wasn't, in, it wasn't, a, she didn't do anything. She just ran. She just went, she just jumped from one multiverse to another she didn't defend herself nothing but it was that one sentence that single sentence from doc from this dead doctor strange like this dead defender doctor strange made her feel motivated enough to control her powers and finally fight against wanda in the final battle whippity fucking do and also this movie has some false advertising Look at the, the teasers and the trailers for this movie. It shows that the evil Doctor Strange, the sinister Strange, would be the main antagonist of the film. As he ominously quoted to the main Stra Doctor Strange, our Doctor Strange, things just got out of hand. Remember that line? Yeah, it wasn't in the movie. While the Scarlet Witch confront inner struggles as she helps Doctor Strange with the multiverse issues. However, Sinister Strange only appeared in one scene near the climax and had less than 20 minutes of screen time as he got skilled as he got killed off by Doctor Strange after a short violent feud over the copy of the Darkhold. I really thought that, you know, this is what you know, Disney does this sometimes. You know, it's very common, you know, Disney and Marvel, well not Disney, but Marvel it's very common some t because th they do this sometimes. If you look at, you know, past trailers, you know, Avengers Infinity, the trailer for Avengers Infinity War, you know, we had the shot of, you know, near the end of the trailer where, you know, Captain America, like everyone, you know, the incredible in the Hulk, they all of them were running towards the camera. They were all running towards the camera. Remember that shot? Yeah, it wasn't in the movie because like Hulk only appeared in the beginning, the opening of the movie, and then he just, he just tapped out. He's like, no, I don't want to come out. I don't want to get, I don't want to face Thanos again. I'm a pussy. <laughs> like, that's what happened here. I thought, like, the villain of this movie, I thought Doctor Strange and Scarlet Witch would team up and fight a doc, an evil Doctor Strange. You know, and even the title of this movie, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, is somewhat a misleading title. Though the title does indicate that this is a movie about Doctor Strange and his adventures across the multiverse, the film focuses more on subplots regarding the schemes of, one, of the one and only Scarlet Witch, Wanda's children, and America Chavez's journey as Doctor Strange had succeeded in fixing issues within them. Besides, most fans believe that the Scarlet Witch should have been introduced as the main character of the film as Doctor Strange was only portrayed as a side character who simply fixed problems of other characters. If one would pay specific attention to the film title, Multiverse of Madness and its abbreviation M O M M O M M Mom. You know what that spells? Then it can make one realize this film has a stupid plot about the Scarlet Witch wanting to become a mother again as she travels within. The multiverse to capture and kill America Chavez instead of manipulating reality again because of those circumstances to quote a YouTube comment the film title should be referred to as the Scarlet Witch and her madness in the multiverse and it would make even more sense to the film's plot but yeah so talking so getting into that you know bullet point this movie really is more about its main character. The main character of this movie 
is Scarlet Witch. Elizabeth Olsen. She is the main character. It's not... Doctor Strange, even though his name is in the title of the movie, he's barely in it. Like, the movie is more focused on Scarlet Witch, and it's more focused... And then it also has, like, cameos from the Illuminati, who just who's just there because, you know, they're setting up fan service and, like... Uh, uh. Despite being a decently well-written plot, the film could cause confusion to the audience whether it is about Doctor Strange, the Scarlet Witch, America Chavez, or their adventures within the multiverse. You don't really know what you won't. You don't really know. You know what? The, who is the main character? You know. You, you know. Sometimes you know, as an audience, as a viewer, you're confused as to who the main character really is. Is it really Doctor Strange? Because it felt, is it more Scarlet Witch? Is it more America Chavez? Although most indicate that this film is about the Scarlet Witch and her intentions to kill Dr. Uh, Chavez as Doctor Strange came along to help the latter escape. And also, in previous trailers, Carl Mordo, she would tell Edge of Ford, was featured to be one of the main characters as a primary enemy of Doctor Strange due to his determination of stopping and killing his former friend. However, it turns out that he was not the same Carl Mordo Doctor Strange had trained and fought in the previous film, but Mordo in this film was simply a random variant who is a member of the Illuminati that tricked and captured Doctor Strange and America Chavez. Additionally, similar to Sinister Strange, he only had less than 20 minutes of screen time, thus wasting the opportunity to have conflict between Doctor Strange and the main, our Carl Mordo, the one in the first movie. For some reason, you know, and also, um, for some reason, possibly due to making sure the film was a success in foreign countries, America Chavez was rewritten from being a lesbian to someone having lesbian parents. Although America having two moms was a thing in the comics, this, however, led the movie to be banned at the last minute in many countries. You can't have... There are countries out there who are uh, not racist, but like they just don't... You know, they're anti-LGBT. You gotta be straight, all right? No, you can't be gay. You gotta be straight. You know, in in our country, you gotta be straight. Um, good thing I'm not in any of the. Good thing I don't live in any other foreign countries. Jesus Christ. Um, and there's also, um, you know, during the development and production before this movie, you know, was shot and stuff like that. Yada yada yada. There was some executive meddling. Scott Derrickson, the, uh, who, the director of the first Doctor Strange, had previously returned to direct the sequel. That's right. It wasn't Sam Raimi. He was hired later on. But Scott was going to come back and direct the sequel. He had potential ideas as he wanted to make this film into a full-blown horror movie featuring Nightmare, a villain of Doctor Strange from the comics and a character that I really wanted to see. Uh, I guess that's not going to... Uh, and that never happened. Um, while deeply exploring the characters of Jonathan Pan, Panborn, Pangborn, uh, Hamir, and other... After their smaller roles in the first film, Derrickson wanted to explore more into gothic and horror contexts that were lacked in the first film as few producers also had ideas of to feature the multiverse as a horrific concept to have hopeless consequences while introducing more monsters. Despite these methods, however, Marvel Studios and Disney decided to turn this movie that would only have scary sequences without actually featuring a horror plot. Therefore, Derrickson decided to depart as the director but remain in the film production as an executive producer as a compromise to avoid conflicts and with creative differences with while Sam Raimi took over as a new director. So, yeah. So, and, uh, oh yeah, by the way, uh, while Raimi did a good job of showing best efforts with the film and its scary sequences, it was not put into full potential to go into detail 
of the multiverse as an extremely dangerous notion to be dealt and meddled with since it has since it would be unwise to mess with something that has little to no information and acknowledgement besides this meddling was only made to rely on and expand the aftermath of WandaVision instead of actually focusing on the main story of Doctor Strange and his own individual adventures. So Scott Derrickson, the original director, left this film. He wanted to, you know, go full on horror, uh, scary, um, which Marvel Studios did it. Disney was like, yeah, we're not going to do that. He left and he directed a movie that is way better than this fucking movie. Uh, the Black Phone. Definitely watch The Black Phone. I did a review on it on my YouTube channel. A little, uh, a brief, a tiny review of The Black Phone on my YouTube channel. Go check it out. Uh, but yeah, Scott Derrickson left this movie and he directed and made that movie, which is way more better than this garbage. Um... <laughs> I mean, it's not as bad. I mean, don't get me wrong. Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness isn't as awful as Thor Love and Thunder. But there are a lot of um, negative things. And there are a lot of flaws in this movie. Uh, this, like, for example, the CGI in the film can be felt out of place in some parts of the film. Especially the third eye located in the foreheads of Sinister Strange, the Evil Strange, and our Doctor Strange. And I know it has something to do with, um, I know it has something to do with, um, the VFX artists. I heard the, I read some news articles, a bunch of news articles, and people were talking about it on YouTube that a lot of the Marvel Studios, you know, visual effects, their team are going, are working like nonstop back and forth, um, between the movies and the you know I I'm not a visual effects artist I don't I can't even imagine how long it would take to make just a five minute like animation you know CGI animation or whatever I can't even imagine it you know it it might be you know time consuming you got to have a lot of time but also patience it's gonna time and patience but yeah but uh, anyway. Despite the film being decent, it's somewhat carried out misandristic and feminist methods that made the majority of the women smarter, stronger, while men getting weaker. For example, Doctor Strange in his very own movie and Wong, who are very powerful characters, have been overwhelmed and overpowered by the Scarlet Witch every battle they face, even during the final battle where Doctor Strange dream walked during the wadding wad corpse of Defender Strange, who died in the beginning of the opening of this movie. Doctor Strange basically only ran around the corners of the mo movie without even combating hand-to-hand -hand against the Scarlet Witch. Besides, Doctor Strange previously, previously had no problem dealing with more powerful beings like Thanos with four Infinity Stones, and he even lasted much more much longer before being outsmarted. The moment where Mr. Fantastic answered the Scarlet Witch's question regarding whether the mother of his child is still alive, Scarlet Witch blatantly stated out loud that the children would have someone else to look up to, thus making the statement being a punch in a face to real life fathers and father figures as if they are unnecessary to contribute and raise the lives of children. So if your father uh, you might get offended by that statement, by that one line that Doc that Scarlet Witch said to Mr. Fantastic about, you know, ch his, his children, Mr. Fantastic's children. So yeah. Um, yeah, and also additionally, the three male members of the Illuminati, Black Bolt, Mr. Fantastic, Professor X, were killed in quick painful and gruesome approaches, but Captain Carter and Captain Marvel were given an opportunity to fight in a lengthy violent conf confrontation against Wanda before being eventually killed. Despite having, despite being heavily anticipated and finally being introduced in the MCU, this is the one thing that everyone was hyping up for, the Illuminati were very underutilized and downgraded 
in regards to their powers to the point where some people have compared them to the League of Super Acquaintances from that Spongebob episode or the Guardians of the Globe from the TV show Invincible. Due to them also being teams of heroes who are easily defeated by overpowered enemies despite their powers. Additionally, I remember those episodes of Sp I remember that episode of SpongeBob, and yes, I have seen Invincible. Check out my review for the Invincible on my YouTube channel. I did post it when it did when it came out, so definitely go back and look look up my review for uh, Invincible season Invincible season one, and I can't wait for the next season of Invincible on Amazon. Additionally, everyone in the Illuminati except Professor X were very unlikable characters, as they were willingly to execute. 616, our Doctor Strange from the Destruction, A3H Strange Varia, their own Doctor Strange had pre have done previously, without even listening to their Strange's explanations of his own Scarlet Witch and her major threats to the multiverse. The Illuminati, along with their Christine Palmer, um, believe that, excuse me, that 616... Strange is the same as their variant and the former teammate who accidentally destroyed a different universe in an attempt to defeat Thanos. The 838 Palmer, Christine Palmer, uh, Rachel McAdams, while understandably cynical and unoptimistic about the 616 and his selfless intentions to stop the Scarlet Witch, was also unlikable for a while as she frequently questioned 616 strange even though he is a completely different variant despite having similar ends to stop conflicts they blame him they shit on him without listening so basically what that so basically what that what i meant by, in that statement was that they bl they 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 are blaming him they are shitting all over him even though he's a doctor strange from another unit not their strange it says Doctor Strange from another universe, our universe. But they still are questioning him. They're still like, sus you know, he's sus or something. You know, he's suspect. Besides Mr. Fantastic, 838 Mordo and 838 Captain Marvel, Maria Wambo, highly and highly and arrogantly underestimated the Scarlet Witch as they claimed that Wanda is not a multiversal threat they needed to face while stating that they can handle 616 Strange Little Witch if she decides to dreamwalk, to end quote. In terms of irony, they all but, they all but 838 Mordo, all but, you know, their Baron Mordo died in the conflict that, which made their statements being pointless never fucking underestimate this is a big lesson for superheroes you know i know superheroes don't they don't exist in real life but uh, this is a huge lesson for anyone out there on the internet on you know and anywhere never underestimate never they may look short they may look small they may look weak but they but never underestimate they might be fucking powerful. They can be strong. They can be powerful, and they can fucking kill you. Which they, which she did, which Wanda did, in this, you, you know, in the, this universe, in the Illuminati's universe, and also the the one line. And to conclude this very long video, the infamous line from Mister Fantastic. You know, the infamous line from Mr. Fantastic that many people made fun of. You know, there's so much memes, hilarious memes on YouTube, on, the, you know, Facebook, Instagram, whatever, wherever. And, it, you know, when I, every time I look at these videos or these memes, I'm laughing my fucking ass off because they're, because it, it's true. It's true. When Mr. Fantastic, John Krasinski himself, introduced in the movie as and i quote the smartest man alive let me repeat that the mr fantastic the smartest man alive smartest man alive was dumb enough 
to tell Wanda about Black Bolt's powerful voice, which resulted in the latter being killed by Wanda. Yeah, you're really smart. And you're fucking dead, Mr. Fantastic. Woo! Thank you. You really are smart, Mr. Fantastic, for telling your opponent, your enemy, someone who could be your enemy, your teammate's powers. You are definitely the smartest man alive. You deserve that title, John Krasinski, Mr. Fantastic. You deserve that title. I'm being sarcastic. So, you know, there are some moments in this movie that I did like, um, you know, that I did love, you know, great performances. You know, I love this new, you know, introduction, you know, this new um, being introduced to this new character, America Chavez. Xochitl Gomez is a wonderful addition to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and I can't wait to see more of her. But like there are some things like very few, like maybe a little handful amount of things that I did like, but the rest of it, and like, I'm looking at the timer right now, it's like 35 minutes, I'm already rambling on, that's a lot, like over 30 minutes, like 30 minutes of me talking about every single thing wrong about this movie, that tells you how much this movie, you know, how many problems are within this movie, it's not great. It's not a great movie. It's not even good. It's definitely... I'd rather watch... I, I will say this. I will. I would rather watch Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness over... I'd rather watch Captain Marvel... Or, you know, I'd rather watch Doctor Strange in Multiverse of Madness over um, Thor Love and Thunder. I'd rather watch pretty much anything over Love and Thunder. Any, any of them. Including the second Ant-Man movie. Oh, God. Um... But come on. This movie just had so many fan service, callbacks, fan service. That's just it. Fan service, misleading, you know, misleading the audience, the viewers who are watching this film. And I felt like it just crumpled in the end. But anyway, um, did you, so I want to know, ladies and gentlemen, were there any things, any note that you've took in that you've took that uh that i haven't mentioned in this very long video uh, i know but is there something i didn't mention let me know in the comment section below uh is there something you agree with me or disagree with me even i would love to know why and can you please if you do disagree with me if you do disagree with me on some, uh, uh, you know, on some of the topics, let me know why. Uh, please back that up with, you know, an explanation. Um, but um, other than that, uh, thank you so much for taking your so much of your time and listening to this uh, video. Uh, thank you so much. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I will see all of you lovely people really soon.